Hey there, everybody. Jeremy Siskin here. I'm the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano and Jazz Piano Fundamentals and uh, this recently uh, released CD, Songs of Rebirth, which I'd love for you to listen to if you have the chance. Um, today, I want to talk with you about repetition. All of my students are getting ready for their end of semester exams. And one of the consistent notes that I find myself giving is that they need more repetition in their solos. And if we think about it, repetition is one of the things that keeps something from sounding random. We need to repeat something for it not to sound random. I get this, uh, this analogy of if I'm telling a story and the first story, the first sentence of the story is Jane is going to the park. Here, I'll sketch it out for you here. Uh, let's see, I'll just write it here. Jane is walking to the park. In sentence two, if the second sentence is John likes ham, it sounds like insanity, <laughs> right? Uh, Jane is walking to the park. John likes ham. And that's because we need some element of sentence one to come back in sentence two, right? We could say something else about Jane. You could say, Jane likes ham. It's still a little bit random, <laughs> right? Uh, but at least we're talking about something that we recognize here. Or if we say, John is at the park, then we have the park repeating, right? And then, okay, maybe Jane's walking to the park to meet John. Who knows? Or, you know, we could even say, walking can be very strenuous in San Francisco, where Jane lives, right? Um, and so walking could be the thing that repeats, okay? But if there's no element of sentence one and sentence two, then we feel random. Now, of course, I'm not here to give you a grammar lesson. <laughs> um, what I want to talk about is two types of repetition. And I'm just going to call them short form versus long form. And I think it's helpful to think of these kinds of repetitions instead of just repetition as this great big concept. So I think of short form repetition as being two, three, or four notes. More than four notes, it gets a little tricky. Not completely crazy or impossible, but, but hard. Long form, we're thinking about repeating phrases. So short form repetition is often going to take place within a phrase. So for example, if I'm playing a blues, Just repeating two, three, or four note groups. So um, now one, this doesn't have to be fancy, okay? I'm, I'm stopping myself from skipping ahead, right? It can be. simple, straightforward repetitions. It could also be, just gonna move this up, you know, a few ideas of how to build from here and make it slightly less obvious. The first one is to make it into a chemiola or a cross rhythm. Two ways of, I think, saying the same thing. And so, we could, for example, use a group of three eighth notes. Right, and that's not gonna fit evenly into the measure. So that gets interesting. Or we could use a group of two when we're playing eighth note triplets. So 
one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, but I'm just gonna alternate between. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that can make it more interesting. Oftentimes, I'll use double notes on one of the notes, right? Double note meaning just simply. Usually when I play a double note, I'm thinking about putting an extra note above my main melody note. So double notes are definitely a possibility. Um, or instead of repeating literally the same pitches, I could do a sequence. So instead of could be So taking just a simple interval or a three note pattern and I'm moving it up or down and moving on from, uh, you know, jumping off from there. So often sequences move by step, but they could also move by skip, which I think is actually really interesting. So by, by step, it could be. Okay, so that's just an ascending third and I'm moving it down by steps or it could be. randomly um, leap up by a fifth and then down by a fourth. And that gets really interesting too. This could also be just repeating a rhythm. And here I, I think first of the opening of Charlie Parker's famous Now's the Time solo. Da, da, ba, da, da, ba, da, right? Quarter, eighth, eighth quarter, eighth, eighth quarter. So it doesn't have to be that the exact notes are repeating. I could keep that pattern going. too long, uh, but you know, not impossible. But what if the rhythm was just an eighth and then a dotted quarter? Ba, uh, do, ba. Or two eighths and an eighth note triplet. exaggerating these because I'm demonstrating and doing them five or six or seven times. But as we can learn from that Charlie Parker lick, it doesn't have to be that, you know, we repeat ourselves ad nauseum for people to register the logic of the repetition. We can just do a couple of repetitions and then end the phrase. short form repetitions within my phrases, I'm creating a sense of repetition. Now, long form repetition is probably something that you're more familiar with if you've been studying jazz or studying any kind of music. So in this case, we're thinking about repeating a phrase or some element of a phrase. Um, we could, of course, repeat phrases literally. And phrases could be just about any length, but if you're gonna have a shot at repeating them, Going beyond a two measure phrase is probably too long. So I'll do a little bit of demonstrating. I don't think this is a mystery.
that you want to think about is how much space between phrases. And I see this as a problem when, when students start uh, improvising and, and start trying to repeat themselves is that they'll repeat themselves immediately. That they'll play. And that's not incorrect, but you're going to feel very compressed if you're always repeating yourself without putting any space in. So think about leaving some more space. And repeat maybe every two measures instead of every one measure. Now what's interesting is as you progress, you know, maybe you do a couple of repetitions two measures apart, then it's actually nice to start compressing it a little bit. So maybe two, one, two, three, four. That actually has a nice feel to it, right? So you can change up how much space you put in between your repetitions, absolutely. Um, now, after that, I would think about phrase endings, and particularly in two respects. Um, so one is just the very last note or the last couple of notes. It makes such a big difference to change that note. Um, a special thing that you could do, I, I refer to it as the Witten Kelly principle, is that you can go up at the end of one phrase and then down at the end of one phrase. So if I'm going... It's called the Winton Kelly principle because Winton Kelly plays this incredibly famous solo at the beginning of Freddie Freeloader where he goes, he goes up once and then down once. So, Changing that last note can really go a long way to making it sound like a different phrase. But the other big thing, you know, after about three or four repetitions, you want to make a bigger change to the phrase. And one of the best ways to do that is to add a, I call it a tail to the phrase, which is just a way to say that you're going to extend the phrase to make it longer. So this is cool. This next one I'm going to expand. I'm going to add that tail. of the blues, right? Not to pat myself on the back, <laughs> but like it didn't feel like it needed that much more information. I presented the motif once, presented it once with a different ending note, presented it once with a tail, and then presented it closer together for the last time. I'll give you a different example. makes so much more difference. So much more difference. Makes a huge difference. Makes it so much more interesting. Um, now, how could you change a phrase rhythmically? I have kind of two ways that you can experiment with rhythm to make something that's repetitive seem less overly repetitive. Okay. Um, so firstly, there's the concept of displacement. Okay. This is a fancy sounding word, but all it means is you're going to change the beat on which the phrase starts. So if I'm starting on the end of four, that wasn't on the end of four, that was on the end of three. I'm not paying as much attention as I should. Overconfident. So one, two, three. One, two. Did you hear what I did? I started at once on the end of three, once on the end of two. We love doing this in jazz because it creates this feeling of syncopation and rhythmic tension, but also continuity. I'll do it for you one more time. That same phrase, one, two, three. Three, four, one, two. Let me give you another example. 
Uh, one, I'll start this one on the end of one. One, two, three, four, one. I started on the end of one and the end of three. I'll do it for you one more time. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Um, I always look at Lester Young's solo on Lady Be Good as a great example of this. He starts a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It should be an F natural. Um, but he starts in the end of three and then in the end of one. I'll do it for you one more time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Um, Lester Young was such a genius at making a big solo without using too much material. The other thing that we can do with rhythm, one of the other things, I'm sure there's a million things that we could do, is same rhythm, different notes. We might not need to change every note here, but rhythm itself can be enough of a connector without repeating notes or shapes or phrases. So if I'm improvising going, just change the last note. Now I'm gonna play the same rhythm Um, let me give you another example. One, two, three, four. some of these things I'm going to use some same rhythm different notes maybe some displacement I'm going to change the amount of repetition uh, uh, amount of space between repetitions maybe the last note let's see what happens so um added a tail there right same rhythm different notes shorten the distance in between the phrases and added a tail to the last one. Let's try it at one. displacement starting it on different beats so I'm going to show you this whole page now um, so you can see this madness so on the left hand side is the short form uh, repetition two three or four notes I think hemiolas double notes using sequences either stepping or skipping and then making repetition out of rhythm rather than out of notes on the other side it's phrases Decide how much space you want to leave in between, and you can change that as your solo progresses. Uh, think about changing just the last or couple last notes of the phrase, or adding a tail, playing the phrase, and then adding a phrase ending. And then rhythmically, think about starting it on different beats, and think about practicing using the same rhythm in different notes. So thank you uh, for watching. Uh, Check out my books, Jazz Piano Fundamentals is for beginners uh, for their first six months of lessons. Playing solo jazz piano is for more advanced pianists who want to really be masters of the solo jazz piano style. Uh, see you here for more later. Bye.